In this module, we're going to discuss the momentum of a block function. And we'll start by reviewing the momentum of a free electron whose wave function is given by a plane wave. And we have three ways that we can proceed if we want to determine the momentum of a free electron. The first is to remember that its wavelength, the wavelength of a plane wave, is given by 2 pi divided by the wave vector. And so we can immediately write down the momentum using the, using the de Broglie relation. That the momentum P for any quantum mechanical particle is H over lambda. And so the P in this case, the momentum in the X direction is h bar times the wave vector, where h bar here is h over 2 pi. We can also obtain the momentum by calculating the expectation value of the momentum operator. which in the x direction is just minus i h bar times the derivative with respect to x. And here we have to be a little bit careful. We have to make sure that our wave function is normalized. So let's write our wave function as equal to one over L one over the square root of L times e to the i kx, where the value of x ranges between zero and L. And so then we can calculate our expectation value by the usual expression, the complex conjugate of the wave function times the operator for the quantity that we're interested in times the wave function integrated over all space, which in this case is from zero to L. So substituting in for the wave function, we have one over L integral from zero to L e to the minus i k x times minus i h bar times d by dx of e to the i k x dx, which is 1 over L times minus i h bar times i k from the derivative times the integral from 0 to L e to the minus i k x times e to the i k x is just 1. And when we integrate, and so we're going to integrate 1 from 0 to L, which will give us a factor of L that will cancel the normalization L and we obtain H bar times K. The same answer as we obtained from using the de Broglie relation. And there's a third way of obtaining the momentum of a plane wave, which is to recognize that a plane wave is an eigenstate, a free electron wave function is an eigenstate of the momentum operator.
And so when we operate on our wave function with the operator by taking the derivative with respect to x, we obtain minus ih bar times ik times 1 over root l e to the ikx, which is the wave function that we started with. This is just equal to h bar k times psi. And so we can see that our momentum is h bar k once again. Okay, so now let's move on to the case of the block function. Describing the electrons in a periodic solid, which remember is given by the product of e to the ikx, the same part as the same expression is for a free electron times a periodic part u sub kx, which is the unit cell part of the function. And so this is the product of a plane wave and a unit cell function that repeats periodically. And we can see that the wavelength the plane wave part, just as before, is lambda, which is 2 pi over k. And so we can write down, using the de Broglie relation, that the momentum is h bar times k. And this time, because we're in a periodic solid, because we're in a crystal, we call this the crystal momentum. And this is a particularly useful quantity because it's conserved, for example, during optical absorption, which we know takes place without the electrons changing their K value. But what we'd like to know is whether this is a true momentum for an electron in a block function. So let's take a look and see if it's an eigenstate. So let's calculate the effect of operating on the wave function by our momentum operator, we'll take the momentum operator in the x direction, for our block function, to see if the block function is an eigenfunction of the momentum operator. And we'll proceed in just the same way as we did for the free electron by operating on our wave function with minus i h bar d by dx. But this time, rather than operating on only e to the i k x, we're operating on the product 
v to the i k x times mu sub k, which also depends on x. So we have to take the derivative of the product. So we have minus i h bar times the derivative of the first term, i k, e to the i k x, e sub k of x, plus the derivative of the second term, e to the i k x, d by dx, e sub k of x. And this is equal to h bar k times our psi that we started with minus i h bar e to the i k x d by dx mu sub k of x. And so in general, this is not equal to a constant times psi. And so psi is in general not an eigenfunction of the momentum operator. So this is equal to h bar k psi only if the derivative with respect to x of the unit cell function is equal to zero, which in general is not the case. So a block function is not an eigenfunction of the momentum operator. And therefore, h bar k is not strictly a momentum for a block electron. So if we want to be really rigorous, we should always remember to call it the crystal momentum rather than the momentum of the electron. That's it for today and thanks for listening.